So, uh, hello everyone. My name is uh, Charles Schultz, uh, and today I'll be talking to you about the Document Foundation uh, point of view and experience with respect to things such as the infrastructure um, and our community and governance model. So, the presentation <coughs> is coming right up. Um, first of all, um, I think you know it's it's interesting that uh, we sort of share our experiences uh, in between foundations because it's something that you know usually may not or may not happen that frequently. Um, my point is 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 this: uh, from what I've been able to gather, uh, we all shared uh, uh, in this room some very common concerns, especially about uh, independence, um, you know, resources, resources management, and and and, and what have you not. Um, so, I'll be telling you and I'll be presenting you very shortly, uh, how is it that we work uh, at the Document Foundation? How, how is it that we work around this, um, oh shit. Okay, excellent. Um, so, <laughs> some very, uh, some very uh, easy thing. First of all, what is the Document Foundation? I think it's, uh, it, it may be obvious, but it's not obvious at all, because the Document Foundation is actually, haha, a foundation. <laughs> what is a foundation? It is not, just like in some countries, such as in the US, uh, a specific type of companies. It's not a business. It's not a non-for-profit company. It's not a 501. It's not a 503. It's different. It's a German-based foundation. It's an actual foundation. So foundations, you can find them in non-Anglo-Saxon European countries, such as Latin rights, German rights, such as France, Germany, Italy, Spain, Switzerland, whatever. What are these? Think of them as monolithic blocks handling huge chunks of capital money, only served to either sustain some sort of things, like you can sustain a grave, a family grave, or you can sustain uh, big patrimonial assets. That's, that's, that's what it is. Or charities. These are big charities. But the, main, the key point is that you cannot change how they work. Or it's very difficult. And you cannot, kinda, you cannot really di close them. It's not meant for that. You cannot buy them. They're, they're bunkers. They're legal bunkers. They're here and you're in a legal bunker. Nothing will ever happen to the assets that you're defending. So what is it that we're defending? in our foundation. The trademarks, the code, the community. Basically, we're defending the free software called LibreOffice. That's what we do. So um, on a day-to-day -day basis, the Document Foundation is basically in charge of supporting the project called LibreOffice, as well as a new set of projects that we call the Document Liberation Project. Uh, and we could support more, but basically our focus is a document-centric free software uh, set of projects. Let's just say for the moment that we focus on LibreOffice. So we support LibreOffice. Um, and the way we support LibreOffice at the Document Foundation is by providing infrastructure, servers, mailing lists, repositories, uh, you know, anything, you know, the, the usual stuff, the wiki, the bug trackers, what have you. But we also support the project uh, through a legal, on the legal uh, side, licenses, copyright, litigation. Uh, we do accounting. Um, you know, it's, it's an entire machine, so to speak, that is geared towards supporting the project. Now, how does it work? So, very, very quickly, uh, this is rather unique. We have members at the Document Foundation. Those members are all individuals. These members are individuals of the German Foundation. You don't have to be a member to, of course, contribute to the LibreOffice project. That goes without saying. But if you want to be a member, you basically need to, well, you know, kind of like be active, prove that you have been active. We have some automated uh, routine uh, platforms for that, where you basically say, hey, you know, this is me, this is my, this is my Git, uh, you know, this is my account on the wiki, this is my account on the bug tracker, or I don't really have a very active account, but this is what I've done, like at this event, and, and you know, I'm working with this guy and this, uh, this guy, et cetera, et cetera. Now, once you become a member, you can elect both the board of directors, you can elect the membership committee, that's kind of like this Supreme Court, if you will, 
Um, and basically, this is how the foundation runs. And you can be elected, of course. You can, be, you can become a director, or you can become a, an elected member of the membership committee. Um, aside these two bodies, we have the advisory board, it's made of sponsors. Legally speaking, we cannot really say they're sponsors, so they're strategic partners. Don't ask me why, German law, whatever. They're not sponsors. Uh, they're strategic partners. And they provide some funding, they provide uh, sometimes developers, and they provide mostly insight. Like, hmm, you know, what do you think about that? Or, huh, have you ever thought about doing this in the future? Um, and then we have ad hoc functional bodies. Uh, it doesn't mean they're not important. It means they're very important. It just means that foundational, legally wise, they're not, you know, they don't really exist. We could, we could change them at will. <laughs> we have the engineering steering committee. And of course, we have all the teams that you might expect to find in, a, in an open source project. You have the documentation, you get the marketing team, uh, but you also have the infrastructure team. And we'll come back to that uh, later on. Then, at the level of the foundations, we do have employees and contractors under the supervision of an executive director, himself employed by the Document Foundation. We have more contractors than employees. Uh, Sophie, correct me if I'm wrong, we have like, we hire, we, we, we pay around four people now? Yes. Yeah. There is only one employee. Yeah, there's only two employees, mm -hmm. and there's only one very specific reason for this. Those two employees are German, so it's much easier for a German foundation to directly hire Germans, but we also have a policy of not thinking that, hey, you know, let's just hire German people and that'll be easier. No, we don't want to do that. It just so happens that these two guys are Germans. So it's easier and so we hire them. The rest are contractors. There is one contractor over there, Sophie, <laughs> Sophie Gauthier. Um, I've been contracted in the past uh, for, very specific, for very specific things as well. Um, we do not plan to hire 20 different thousand people, uh, seriously. Uh, it's, 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 uh, we, don't, we don't do that. So, on the tools and inf infrastructure, uh, this is pretty much what, we're, what you're looking at in terms of infrastructure. So you get the code. You have a self-hosted Git repository, so we don't use GitHub. Although we do have an account at GitHub for seriously critically small things, you know? It's, it's just side, like side shows, so to speak. It's just when you don't want to go and you don't want to make it sound official or you don't want you really, you know? It just, you just open something. Uh, so otherwise we have the self-hosted Git repository. It is very, very, very important to realize that when we started the Document Foundation, we didn't have a self-hosted Git repository. We have a Git repository on the free desktop infrastructure. We still have it. It's going to be migrated and everything will be migrated, including the Bugzilla. We also have the Garrett for patches and contributions, visualiz visualizations. And we have Open Grok, but I don't think that Open Grok is being really used anymore. For quality assurance, we have Mostrap, which is uh, originally uh, a tool for uh, coming uh, from Mozilla that we are investing localization on. So it's interesting. We have BiBisect uh, for BiBisecting the code. And we have uh, another bunch of tools. Uh, localization, Poodle. Um, it's we had an historical relations with these guys back from the time of the openoffice.org. And project management, obviously we do have uh, wikis, we have the mailing lists, we have now the red mine which is being extended to pretty much everything when it comes to task management which is not directly related to code. We have silver stripe which powers our websites. Uh, not because we think it's the best thing in the world, we just happen to use it. Uh, we have a blogging platform. Really, we, have, we use that for press releases. Uh, and we are going to basically extend this thing and we're going to self-host it as well. Um, as you have realized, we have this um, movement to basically expand what we invest in in terms of self-hosting and, and, and our own resources. Uh, it is a choice. It is a conscious choice. We don't have that much of a detailed roadmap as to what we want to uh, host or what we want to uh, sustain, but the general policy is anything that makes sense and that we would like to secure, we're going to basically have it done inside or we're going to use it inside and we're not going to rely on a third party. Um, the hardware, generally speaking, has either been donated to us or we have bought it and we're buying more hardware. 
Uh, right now, you may not, uh, I, don't, I don't know if that was ever uh, mentioned this morning, but most of the hardware we're buying is not for servers. Most of the hardware we're buying is for testing in real life our builds. We're a multi-platform software. You want to buy more Macs to run more tests. I can assure you, if you're an end user software, oh my God, you want to do that. Servers, it, they're even like a lower concern. Um, and we obviously uh, partner with uh, the German ISPs and hosters who donated uh, to us some of, you know, some of the hardware and some of it we actually pay. Here it's a really rough, 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 you know, breaking down of our budget. So we have, let's say around 800K, uh, in year, uh, 800K euros for 2014. We have a reserve of a third. Um, I don't know, I think it was Apache that was explaining that you could run for, they can run for three years. I think now we can basically run for two years, you know. Uh, running for two years in kind of a more or less deprecated mode, but at least run for two years. So uh, then we have the infrastructure and fixed costs, which is really infrastructure, a few salaries, the legal part, that's one thing. Then we have what I would say the yearly expenditures, which might be ad hoc spending, or things that we are not necessarily thinking that are going to be you know, completely recurring. Because if they were recurring, they would probably land here. Or they would end up l uh, landing here. We have the travel expenses, we have tenders, we really have everything else there. So basically this is, a sc you know, this shows you how you could visualize how the Document Foundation works. This is the project in the community. These are the teams, these are, you know, the different activities, so to speak. And supporting this, you have the Document Foundation doing all this. From the infrastructure management to, to, you know, to the release management, that's very important. Um, funding for new operations, marketing, even certification. That's, that's what the Document Foundation does. The rest is actually mostly and by default volunteers work. Does it even work? Mm -hmm. um, well, I'm going to show you a few things um, about the activity of our project and our community from the beginning. And that is for the code quality. So clearly we must be doing something good. We're here, it means it's better. <laughs> so now to the big question, why does it exist? Yes, why? The idea of a foundation actually started with the creation of the OpenOffice.org project. So it's not, a, it's not a new idea. But we had a vendor-dominated project, and it clearly showed its limits. We're thankful for some microsystems. We're very thankful, but we need to move on. After 10 years, we needed more independence. And honestly, when Oracle took over Sun, oh my god, this is, this is not possible. I mean, 10 years and 10 years down the road, you're still, you're, you're locked in a situation with Oracle where they say, no, we will not be releasing be betas and we will not tell you when because, oh, that's going to be your way now. Seriously, you can't do that. I mean, come on. We deserve better. And so basically, the community literally called for the creation of a foundation. So, the real question behind it is, why not joining an existing foundation? Well, at first it was simply not the feedback of the community. They said, we want a foundation for OpenOffice.org. The real question behind this is, if we were to join an existing community, which foundation? I mean, would it be okay with the Eclipse Foundation? Do they have something to tell us? What do they have to bring to us? Do we have any sort of, uh, you know, compatibility in terms of technology? It's not, it's not you know, it's not, it's not that, clear. Then there's a big difference between forking a project, which really is what happened, and trying to fit a community within an existing one. And I think this is a key part of the message here. You can't just go with your square tool into a round hole. And sometimes you just don't know how it's going to be. You don't know whether it's going to be cir circular or not. So it's not written. And clearly speaking, yeah, home rule, independence, our own budget, our way. And everybody highlighted that this morning. Then, of course, the benefits of an existing foundation may not translate very well uh, with an external project. What about your focus? What about maybe you have a different focus? Maybe you have a different interest. Almost done.
So once I've said that, once I've told you it's all volunteer work, et cetera, et cetera, TDF relies, the Document Foundation relies on volunteers for everything, but sometimes we're kind of stepping over it, and we started to do that. Sometimes creating the next client for, to visualize uh, any kind of Office files for Android is actually really complex. And for some reason, the community of independent developers, well, they can't really kind of like get around this. It's really complicated and you just cannot wait in the air for so many years and then nothing happens. If it, ha it was meant to happen on a purely community volunteer basis, it would already have happened. So we decided to force our chance and we decided to contract this. And clearly this is not a volunteer work. This is a paid work on behalf of the Document Foundation and the Document Foundation is funding this fully or partially, that's like a different question, but it doesn't really matter. So, as I said, there's a fine line between pure meritocracy and the collective ambition of an entire community. Closing remarks, um, yeah, we must be very responsible towards our community. When we started the Document Foundation, uh, to paraphrase a French comic, authorized people with authorized opinions, they called us fools. They said, you will never manage it. You're a bunch of European communists. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, but, you know, <laughs> whatever. Uh, Apache tried to tell us, but you don't understand how you, you know, you don't understand how open source community works. So you need to go and, you know, why are you even here? You know, IBM is great and blah, 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 and Oracle is your friend. And we said no. Now our results speak for themselves. But seriously, we must try harder and we must do much better. So we gotta stay very humble on this. Thank you very much.